You're about to listen to the award-winning Stuart Tedesso Show. This show is for biologically and emotionally mature audiences. If you should not be here, please go away. We'll still be here when you're mature enough to partake. Mwah! Otherwise, I'm just going to get really, really drunk and say stupid shit. Isn't that what we do? We, don't we do that? Yeah. We kind of do that. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Hey. Welcome to the Stuart Bernasso Show. I'm Dave. I'm Melissa. And look at this. Two weeks in a row with a show. Yeah. Holy crap. You think we've actually done this before? <laughs> Only a few dozen thousand times. Yeah. So It seems. Yeah. So <laughs> we're back. And um, as you're listening to this, I just wrote myself a note because I meant to do it before we started recording, but I didn't. And I'm going to do it after we record. Um, so last week was our first show back for a little bit because uh, of some drama I was going through. I lost my job because of the Stuart Pedesso show. And yeah. I can actually say this. One of the few times for a while I can go, I can say this. So if you missed the story, just go back to last week's show. It's really long. It's just too long yeah, to yeah, go yeah. through the whole thing again. Right. So, um, uh, but so if you would like to hear the show that pretty much got me fired, you can become a sponsor of ours on Patreon, which you can go to patreon.com slash Badasso, or you can just go right to the link on our website, stuartbadasso.com, which I... I got an interesting story about our website. You know, I don't know if you know this. No, you wouldn't know this. Oh. Um, an interesting story about our website. I'm so excited. Well, it depends. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see if I'm excited. So, uh, but if you want to hear the show, we are posting, because I took down just about all of our old shows, all 630 or something like that. Um, I do have them, and I am going to post on our Patreon the show that pretty much got us got me fired. And um, so we'll be doing that, some classics. And I'll ask you, Melissa, I'll ask mm-hmm. you, hey, what show should we put up next? And, you know, what show do you remember that was really cool or whatever? Oh, God. I'm done now. You know, I know. Like, there's just so many. Yeah, of course. And I was drunk during most of them. That's so, true, yeah. Woo. If, if, if not more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. You Every single show that was at Eric's house oh, was yeah, the funniest show ever. Yeah. Right. Every single show at Eric's house was the funniest show ever. Mm. And um, <laughs> what I can remember. I'm positive. In fact, I was looking for something else and I just found the CD. Yes, it's an old form of media. I just found the old CD with all of the pictures that Rome took. Oh! The day we had a show at Eric's yeah, house. That Rome. was fun. I remember that. He was like climbing on furniture behind us, taking pictures and stuff like that. So I was going to resurrect He's kind of artsy. He's, he's totally. An, oh, he's kind of, actually kind of. He's very artsy. He's like serious artsy. He's super. He collects art. Yeah. A lot. Oh. Collects a lot of local art, which I mm-hmm. think is pretty great. Absolutely. He's very, very into the local collecting local art scene, which yep. I would like to be more a part of. And I can talk about that later. Yeah. Um, so check that out. Go to StuartBernasso.com. And um, in spite of whoever you talk to, our site is not harmful. <laughs> Twitter has deemed our site harmful. Oh, really? Yes. They will not let us post any links to our show. To I wonder why. Um, because of the, the Pillsbury Doughboy who's running it. Yeah, maybe. It's. I mean, I'm sure it's bot filled now. I mean, the funny. Yeah, but thing what is, would they have? I. I mean, that's. I'm like wondering, like, who's looking at our show and going, "This show, wow!" Somebody actually looked at it. And went, there's some leftist views here. We can't have that nonsense. Well, a couple of things. Well, actually, that could be it. So most of the shows that we had up were were like the show notes had leftist kind of had stuff mm-hmm, on there mm-hmm. are gone now. Hmm. But there are links to, um. Definitely left, not only say leaning, to, like beyond left, mm-hmm. uh, new sites, uh, friends of Art Lee Camp, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like people like that. And um, so I think just maybe just bot wise, that's mm-hmm. yeah, that their their search engine doesn't bot he stuff. like free speech? Oh, no, he says he does. <laughs> I know it's so no, funny. I know it's a does, joke. It's does. a joke. I joking, I kid. I know he doesn't really yeah, like no, free speech, no, he just like speech that's that that doesn't make fun of him or. He likes the speeches, speeches that make fun of him are the best speeches, uh-huh. though. Well, because but it's also really easy too. 
I know it's almost and you know what and I don't know like I don't know if we want to get into like the pe- fact I mean the fact that a lot of people say or he has said that he is um, on the spectrum um, and I don't care but I know I kind of feel the same way because uh, if you're an asshole you're just an asshole Look, and we, being on the spectrum doesn't give you the right to be a dickhead to people we have discussed this on the shows that are now not on the internet yeah. but may show up on Patreon at some point um, which you should check out at Uh <laughs> that it, it being ensconced in the disability community as I was although mm-hmm. I'm not now um, yeah and people with disabilities say hey look we get it, and we know the hardships that you go through having a disability, but that doesn't give you a license to be an asshole. Yeah, absolutely, just, no. without question. Yeah. Um, so, and that includes all the disip- that includes physical disabilities, mental disabilities, yeah, absolutely. learning disabilities, all of the ev- all of them. Yeah. You don't get to be a dick. Right. Yes. Now, I realize some of those disabilities kind of make you seem like you might be a dick, like ter- like Tourette's. Because you well, swear and stuff, but well, you don't anybody always. who's got, but anybody who's got that kind of that kind of severe yeah, yeah, type of Tourette's, yeah. everybody knows about that. But and, usually, and they're not dicks; they're just they just have Tourette's. Well, yeah, but even that kind of Tourette's, you can kind of tell it's not like like that kind of Tourette's. Because I've worked with some mm-hmm. kids who, some teenagers who who have that kind of Tourette's. Mm-hmm. Well, and, it starts out with like little ticks. Like, does it usually? It's never. Well, yeah, like, there's that too. But but yeah. but I had someone who had the you the know kind that you right say f-bombs c-words right. all right. the things but you can tell that that's not someone being an asshole mm-hmm. that that's a that's a thing right you can tell that that's because the tit usually there's you don't just like as we're talking fuck mm-hmm. you know we're right ha- in right. the middle of a sense asshole right right like or, or you don't form those thoughts in a sentence saying, mm-hmm. you know, I think you're a real fucking asshole. And that's not Tourette's. Right. That's just saying the, that's right. just saying the things. Gotcha. Right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's yeah, a very yeah. different type of thing. Absolutely. Without question. Yeah. 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 So it was interesting because the one of the people I worked with was deaf and had Tourette's and actually signed. Signed swear words? Signed swear words. Yeah. As part of the text. Yeah. Yeah. It was really. Wow. Yeah. The human brain, man, isn't it fascinating? Now, I'm sometimes? not saying that's every deaf person who has two is right. Well, not everybody who's one not everybody was, with Tourette's does the exact same right, right, thing. Right. Like it some was, people do. Other, like I've seen people who just do like clapping, mm-hmm. like yeah. a lot of cla- like cla- noises, you know, and it's other like, noises yeah. and clapping mm-hmm. and other, yeah. Parkley so, used to get a woman um, in the store with Tourette's who actually was, oh my God, she was lovely. And I hope she's still around. I hope she's doing great. She, her, her Tourette's, and it's the best, the best Tourette's I could ever have imagined. She would come in and she would just go, yay, yeah, all right. And she'd clap and just be really, she'd like be exuberantly happy, like annoyingly happy. But I was like, that's the kind of, that's her, that's her tick is, is, is clapping her hands and being excited. Like, oh. All right. Her life ain't, I mean, that, no, I mean, that's pretty more good. More people need to do that. I know. I'm like, I realize <laughs> that, I mean, I realize that probably does give her a disability and unable to work, but I'm just saying that it's for Tourette's, that's a pretty good one. If that's what you're going to do. <laughs> I thought she was adorable. <laughs> Um, la la la. I have lists, but there's no segues there's no here. Less, there's no, no segues. So I'll just say. Oh, so I will say this. Oh, I am looking for opportunities to totally just not have anything to do with Twitter anymore. Um, oh, then just don't. I don't I, know. Well, okay. I, okay, never mind. So, let me. I will listen to you. I'm sure you have so, reasons. You have well, reasons. In some cases, I have because I've okay. I've I've managed more than one Twitter account. Right. I had my own personal I one. Right. Uh, I had a, not a Green Party one, but a Green Centered, Green Party Centered mm-hmm. one that mm-hmm. wasn't an official thing, uh, which is a long story, but I used it just as to distribute propaganda, so to speak. Um, there was, I think I still had uh, control of a Rochester chapter of Move to Amend, mm-hmm. which has been defunct for years and years and mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. And I never used it, but it's been just hanging out. And I got rid of those two. Um, 
And then I have the Stuart Badassa one, and I, like I said, my personal one. And I had deleted the my personal one, which when you deactivate it, you have 30 days, and then it's gone forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that when I deactivated mine. And um, I hardly and, ever used it, though, so and it wasn't hard. The, I'm not going to get into the reasons why, mm-hmm. but I got pulled back in for my personal one for a Green Party thing. Uh, I needed the account to be able to do something. Well, yeah. And I was like, you pulled me back in. And then the Stuart one, I thought that I'd hang on for a little bit, one, to try and, especially trying to rebuild the show again. Well, but that, if, but yeah, if they're yeah. saying that we're harmful, fuck them. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure by the first of the year, I, I think we might be off Twitter if they don't. Because I did do the uh, ask them to ask review. Them review thing. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't heard anything yet. But every day I go on and, and say, is our website still harmful? Like the guy who put uh, microchips in pig brains? Yeah, apparently so. And then I put like a longer version of our website that you can't click on. You have to actually type it out. So just every day I'm checking to see if they've decided mm-hmm. we're not harmful and I'm fucking with it. And then, you know. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're not working at the moment. So you can, you can just like kind of uh, stick it to the man when you want. See, thank you for the segue. That's where that's my name. Uh, see, this is what I do for you, yeah. Dave. This, so. is, this is why we're friends. So I'm not. So because I got fired. And yeah. I, and I'm not working. And I've been looking for jobs and i've and i've been how can i put this uh i've been relatively not totally been relatively picky Mm -hmm. um i'm just i'm i'm older no that's i mean you know that's sort of the same thing that happened to me yeah and i and i uh, there was an opportunity take anything there was an opportunity i did apply and then i interviewed Mm -hmm. and i got a tour of this place as a teacher and um and it just wasn't for me. Could I? They wanted me. They wanted me to. They were going to check my references. And I said, ah, hold on. I was like, nothing wrong with the job. It's just not my thing. I, I could do mm-hmm. it. I don't think I'd do it very well. I don't think that would help the students very much. I, I just don't think my skill set is for what you need. And they, they were trying to talk me into it. Because I think they are really dead. They just needed people. They do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but and, you're not that desperate. And I just said, no, nah, I just can't. I mean, I bet if I go back to them, if I get desperate, I'm sure they would. Mm-hmm. Um, but And then Hopefully today, I had this making, I had an interview coming up tomorrow. And I'm not going to get into, there was already some red flags about this position. But I looked at the, uh, I was supposed to go in tomorrow and teach these students. And they were... Um, uh, I don't like using that term. Um, they were medically fragile and they were like self-contained special education. And it was, a just like, again, could have done it. Mm -hmm. It it wouldn't have been very stimulating for me. I don't know how long I would have lasted. I don't know if I would have done the kids uh, justice, you know, for what they wouldn't have had it. You wouldn't have had the enthusiasm. Yeah, right. Exactly. Cause when I get into it, man, I'm, I'm a good fucking teacher. Mm-hmm. But um, it's one of the only things I'll say about myself that's positive. <laughs> but other than that, well, I'm a good drinker. You I'm are. You're very good at it. You're a good friend. Sometimes. Can be. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been there for me a few times when I've needed you. You've been like, boom, you were there. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And so I told him, so I said, look, you know, I just, I don't think this is really for me. I mean, again, I could do it, but I don't think the kids would be best served. And, you know, and so I... I, I, that wasn't a position that they that they they were offering me, but it was. I just turned. I just canceled the interview for tomorrow. Now I do have one for next week, mm-hmm. and I do have um, a. Uh, I, is, I I don't know if I, yeah I'm gonna say this. I'll say it. I'm not mentioning names, and in theory you won't be able to trace it back. I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna make the same mistake twice. <laughs> I, I I hope you can't trace this back to anybody. But la- this this past week, thanks to the World Cup, uh, the which the, is that's all anybody can. T- that's the, all my feed is on the, Facebook is the World football. Cup. The, the football. The football. The uh, football. Uh, someone who I used to work for, who used to be my supervisor at a job, which shall go nameless. Um, I've been bumping into now. I haven't been at the, the bar around the corner because I want to mm-hmm. go watch the World Cup. I go because. It's around the corner, and I want a beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's been going there to watch the World Cup, and so in just talking, he knew I was a little looking for work, and he's working on 
channeling me through some things and there may be a position. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of the things that, I mean, unless someone's a total colossal dick to you, try not to leave job. Don't burn bridges, man. Leaving because you never know whether it's a, a recommendation or something. You know what? I'm glad that that I didn't with my last job. I was I had because you could right, but I did not. Right. I, did I still not. haven't been back in there though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Look, I'm just gonna be honest. I had no reason to be in there other than you work there. Yeah. It's just yeah. really the truth. I mean, it was I, fun. I mean, it's an okay store, but it's not my jam. Right. You can get cards elsewhere, really. And candles. Well, actually, they had really good cards though. I go to the dollar store. Yeah, yeah but the way I do cards. You know, greeting right, cards. Right. I make them when I make them. I, actually, mm -hmm. I want the cheesier ones because mm -hmm. I make them. I, I make, make them, them funnier. Yes, I take them and make put my own little stamp on them. In yeah. fact, when That's I get like legit cards, I see people disappointed. <laughs> I, I, it's not in Spanish, or it's not. It's not a bat mitzvah card. It's not like they get disappointed mm -hmm. that their mm -hmm. birthday card like it's is a, a birthday, birthday card. card. Yeah, right. Like, Where's my, I don't know. Congratulations, Congratulations. on your new baby card. Yeah. <laughs> in Czechoslovakian. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be great. Oh, if only I could get my hands on some of those. You're going to look that up. You're going to have to find out. <sighs> well, no, I'm not going to, not right now, anyway. Um, yeah, so, um, so if any of you out there need a pool boy or something, you know, something we can do in the upstate mm -hmm. New York area, just let me know. And uh, A pool boy in upstate New York. Well, yeah, it's seasonal. I mean, yeah, definitely seasonal. Well, during the winter, I'm sure there's other household choices. I mean, some people have like indoor pools. It does happen. That's there's true. Some rich people out there. There who are have some rich people. Pool. Oh yeah, because yeah, you want me around your rich person pool, indoor pool. I'm the one you want around that. Funny, that feels like someone's been peeing in this pool. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know senor. I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, you're gonna act like you're, you're Spanish. Yeah, you know? I'm totally. No, no, I'm no English. <laughs> I have to go learn Spanish so I can pretend I don't know English. <laughs> Back to those Spanish language podcasts that I always get to episode three and then give up. And then go. Oh, I, I can't, can't do this. No, no. I I respect I got, the language, but I just can't do it. I can't do it. I got again. four words down. Yeah, and that's about it. What are your best Spanish words? Uh, uh, hijo. What's that? Uh, that's that's son. Son. Hija's daughter. Hija. Yeah. Hijo. Hija. Yeah. Um, Cerveza. Trabajo. Well, okay, I had that going in. Uh, <laughs> I can read the label. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know the beer we're reading. Trabajo, <laughs> which is work, oh. and uh, some other words I'm not allowed to say. Well, oh, I can okay. say it on this. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, on on. I mean, when we were kids though. We had we had Sesame Street and. Electric Company and all those type of shows that that's showed, true. Met showed stuff in Spanish, which was cool. Yeah, no, that's true. They did some. They did. You got to one to ten. I could do that. Right, and I think honestly, the only reason I can count to ten in Spanish is because of because of Sesame Street. I oh, don't sure. know. What else would you? I nobody in my house speaks Spanish, so no, nobody in this house. Does. I know you're like thinking about it. Does anybody, no, does anybody speak any other languages in your house? Um. My wife knows some rudimentary sign language. Oh, that's right. Other than sign language. Right, right. You know ASL, what am I saying? Yeah, I'm fluent in ASL. ASL, yeah. so you um, got that going for you. Yeah, although when I'm looking for jobs and they say bilingual is a plus, they always mean Spanish. They never... I put ASL, but nobody gives a shit. Which Because <laughs> deaf people don't count to the, I, the real which world. Which is so weird because, I mean, we run into deaf people all the time. Well, in Rochester particularly, because our city has yeah. two huge deaf institutions. Yeah. I mean, I there was a person in line behind me at the post office today who was deaf. I when I was getting this beer as well as some oh, other the guy, things the guy at the post office I helped the guy in front of me him. yeah I helped the guy in front of me yeah. who was having trouble with his card and he was deaf and the and the cashier was like I uh, have no idea <laughs> right so I, I helped with that which mm -hmm. was cool and then she wouldn't even bag my shit so like thanks I helped you and but you made even me bag my shit, shit. All right, so. well uh, yeah the guy behind me at the post office today was deaf and um 
he uh and i which i didn't realize until i was up there but i but the one there's this one uh postal postal worker who's he's really funny his name is jim he's hilarious he's he just he's just he's just a fun guy like i when i go in there and i see see that dude's there i'm yeah. like all right if i gotta wait at least this guy's gonna be entertaining well i'm glad he's entertaining for you he owes me 20 bucks jim does yeah okay <laughs> He doesn't. I don't know who the fuck Jim is. Yeah, you know who fuck Jim is. So, so, but when I know, but the guy, um, the guy who was behind me, who apparently was deaf, who I found out was deaf, came past me, and I was like, "What is he doing? He's just standing there past me." But then I saw they were signing to each other, and I was like, "Oh, that's so cute. They were signing. That's nice." <laughs> but you, know, but you know what? You don't see that everywhere. You don't see where people actually do. Yeah, do no. know it like yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're actually somewhere and you have a there's a customer that knows sign language and there's and one of the employees there actually does do, does as well mm -hmm. and how great to have somebody it's, at the post office who knows how to sign oh sure no and it's and it's definitely helpful here in this town because Again, yeah we have actually i can i can cite this um we have the highest number percentage of deaf people in our area per capita if i may be statistically relevant there mm -hmm. So yeah, Washington D.C. has the in the U.S. has the most deaf people, but because we're a smaller city, we have the most percentage-wise. Per yeah. yeah, per capita. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, if here, if you yeah, if you live in in Rochester, New York, yeah. learning ASL is actually definitely uh, an an attribute. Yeah, but mostly. it wouldn't be necessarily anywhere else. Right. Right. But. Yeah, but that's kind of cool because growing up, like people did kind of know, like people would learn sign like we would learn sign language any like in school and stuff, learn some of it and things like that. And I think because because we have school of the deaf and all that here and a national institute and national for, the deaf, for the deaf, yeah, deaf here, college. yep, I, we have all of that here. So it's and like I think, people really people really like it's just in our it's just in our faces more. And it's the same thing with like school. why the Spanish podcasts aren't helping me is because if you don't, I learned sign because I didn't try to, I got, I had a job and they, they plot me in the middle of like yep. <laughs> deaf central and said, here you go, buddy, sink or swim. And like, yeah, I was there years. And so yeah, I swam. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Whereas, you know, like I'm in my car and I'm trying to learn like 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there and you don't use it afterwards. I mean, I'm not going to do the podcast, listen to the podcast, and then go downstairs and try and find Telemundo on TV and try to listen to what the Telemundo! fuck I Eric, love Telemundo. Eric Estrada is saying in his novella thing, you know, his <laughs> Spanish soap opera. Is he in a Spanish soap opera? He was. I don't know if he still is. He has, yeah. Wasn't he? Isn't he a cop? He's the chips. He was on chips. No, but isn't he an actual cop? I thought he was like what? an actual cop now. Now? No, dude, he's old, man. He's not a cop okay, now. He oh, man, I could have swore he was a cop. For I'm going to look it up. He can't be a real cop. I think he was a real cop. Was like <laughs> 50 years ago. He's like got to be in his 60s. No, not now. No, but he but it's I just thought it was funny because he I if, if I'm right. He's a cop like Herschel Walker's a cop. There you go. Henry Enrique Estrada. Yeah. A.K.A. Eric Estrada is an American actor and police officer. Oh, come on. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yep. Look, if Eric Estrada pulled my ass over, I would think I was being punked. I really do. Who the fuck would think Eric... If Eric Estrada is chasing you down, you would think you were on, like, America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> Seriously. Come on. He's... He, Chips! They didn't even have guns on the motorcycles on... and chips. What what does it say? Um, I'm trying to find it. All right. Is this like... If it's Wikipedia, Eric Estrada's going on there like Herschel Walker or putting it on his own Wikipedia. No, I, I told you. I really think he did. At some point, he became a... He actually did become one. Like, bef like after he was an actor? Uh, yeah, after the fact. There's no fucking way. It says on here that he's a police officer. Well, that makes him a bastard. <laughs> I, I'm just <laughs> Eric Estrada's a bastard, <laughs> and that um, that's the name of the show. Um, he became it uh, July first, twenty sixteen. He's a reserve police officer in St. Anthony, Idaho. In I, in fucking Idaho. Oh, for fuck's sake! And in Indiana, Muncie, Indiana. 
He's in Virginia. Oh, he's found a few different places. Okay, dude, this is like getting an honorary doctorate from somewhere. <laughs> so he's an he's an honorary bastard. Oh my god. There's the name of the show. I hope his teeth get yellow. I don't know. He says he's an activist too. I don't know. I For what? <laughs> Blue lives matter. What? Get- I don't know. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I'm I'm raising my voice at you, but I don't mean to. Oh, just- he he was big into the to dare. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Well, we've discussed that on shows that are now off off the internet. But... <laughs> oh, he became a spokesperson for the car seat inspection and installation program. Well, that's. I mean, that's. I don't good. care. Yeah. Whatever. What about the good cops? Shut you know. Up. Whatever. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> So again, with all the other shows being taken down, uh, I'll just I'll tell this story really quick. Sorry, I get to tell all these stories again because I'll uh, I can't go back and say listen to the old shows. So during uh, maybe two, one day, two three years ago, no, if I put them all back up, the links are still dead. There are totally new links, so it's not oh, worth it. Okay. Besides, spend a buck a month, go to Patreon. Jesus Christ, a just buck a month. Just do it. Just God do God. it. So anyway, um. During Black Lives Matter protests a few years ago, a few summers ago, twenty twenty, yeah, when it was when it was, or, uh, was the, or was it the one before that, which was like twenty fifteen? No, 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 no the twenty twenty one. Yeah, so uh, when the Daniel Prude stuff here in town, mm-hmm. um, when we were uh, my my daughter and I were downtown participating in them, and we were on the front lines at least one of the days anyway, I can say that for sure. Um, not the day I got shot in the head. It was the day before. It was the day we got tear gas. Not yeah. the day I got shot in the head. Well, that was the time I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I got yes, tear- yes, yeah. you were there. The, the, yeah, I got the day tear gas, too. So, 10 I, out of 10 would not recommend tear gas. No. Really unpleasant. Yeah, that's, Very well, unpleasant. that's what it's meant to. Yeah, yeah. it is unpleasant. It There's is a reason. chemical warfare. It should be banned, and yet... It is are. now. Wow! No, it isn't. I mean, now they're not. So, it's it, the uh, police laws in Rochester, the Rochester, whatever. They're not. They're. They said they're not going to be using that anymore. I bet you, if BLM started up again and started protesting, I'll bet you they'd. I bet you they'd bring it back out. I 100 percent believe that they would. Yeah, cause but I'm I, telling you what they said they. Oh were going yeah, to yeah, do. yeah. To, protect and serve, they say too, and um. So uh. Julie and I were like literally on the front line. We are like in that front line where the line of cops were right, Mm -hmm. you know, on the other side. And there was this dude, this white guy who was like right across from us. And just as he was about to get, they were getting the orders to start marching on us to to come Mm -hmm. at us. Guy was mouthing, don't to us, don't do this. Like to go home or something. And then, like within five seconds, he was, it was right done. in there. Yep. He was right in the line coming yep. after us and shit. Yep. So it's like, fuck you, bro. Fuck you. if you if you think this is so horrible, then you shouldn't then, be fucking. Then why are on you there. even here? I didn't right. know that story. I don't think you told me that story. I thought I said it on the show. Oh, maybe you did. Well, we were drunk though. We were drunk. Yeah, like we do. Yeah. Well, then it's like I'm hearing it all over again now. Oh, see, look. So even if look you listen to all the shows, go to patreoncom slash man. ACAB man. It's the, look, you can say that there, are, you know, what there's good cops or it's just a few bad apples, but the good cops, I'll put air quotes on good cops, know about the bad cops and they don't do anything and they won't tell. So, so that makes them not good cops. Yep, that means they're accessories to the to yeah. the crimes for some concern. And it is the system, and uh, actually, and I realize that they're not the ones doing it, wait, but they're not doing anything. Wait, this show that I'm about hmm. to reference is still at our website, StuartBerdasso.com, that we did a few months ago with Alex Vitale. Which the, was an awesome show, one the, of my favorites. The author of The End of Policing, and you should Great go show. to StuartBerdasso.com and listen to that. If you're like, ooh, Dave, I know a good cop. Go listen to that. Go show. listen to that, and you will be you will get your mind blown in a yeah. good way, in a really good way. Yeah, and then go get go grab the book, which you can do off of storebrass.com. <laughs> It'd make a, a lovely Christmas present for your Fox News watching relatives. That would yeah, be amazing. Love that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, speaking of which, do I'm you have meeting, one of those? Who you don't have a Fox News watching relative, do you? Um, I don't think I, I by don't. proxy. Sort I of. have maybe one by proxy, perhaps, but I don't have any like. 
Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think I do. I do, and I'll tell you who it is later. Okay. Okay. All right. Because I might, you know, I'll just leave it there. Okay. So, uh, I mean, me, I went to do this. I'm like, well, the one by proxy I know about. Oh no, no, I wasn't even thinking of her. Oh, oh my okay. gosh, yeah, no, I have that. There's that. There's another one. Oh okay. Yeah, distant, but. I, yes, I, ladies and gentlemen, and others. This is we this all is have. How that. Yeah, this oh. is how David and I talk. We know each other. Well, okay. I'm, look, I'm still We've been friends a long time, <laughs> and I'm still not into that. You know, whatever comes in my head's coming out of my mouth thing on the show, just because you know I just lost my job because of this fucking show. <laughs> so I, I have to admit, I'm I'm still. It's it's going to get to that point where I, I I'm going to be just literally just spewing whatever I used to, you know, whatever comes into my mind like I used to, but um right now we're watching our mouths a little well, bit. A little bit. Not not too much, but a little bit. Like to still I I'm, I'm pretty sure I fixed all the problems in terms of my name show my full name showing up mm -hmm. when you search. But Okay, this is a better beer than the one that we um just Yeah, just this is actually a good beer like when it's really fucking hot. This would be a great hammered. this would be a great after you mowed the lawn beer. Yeah, it's called Monterey and uh, I'm trying to remember where it's from to say on here. It is something relatively Espanol ish. It's a survey sign up, but I can't remember where it's from. Guatemala. Is that what it says? Yep. Am I missing it? Yep. It's okay. Bag. Product of, Gu oh, okay. Product of Guala Guatemala. It's actually, yeah. I mean, it's not like the best beer in the world, but this is like a good. That's. This is the beer where you have when you, after you mow the lawn and you just really want to just suck down a beer. And it was seven bucks a six pack. And it was seven bucks a six pack. So that's nice. I'm okay with that. That works. And then we got our local Jenny yeah. as the backup when these are gone. So, um, by the way, speaking of you can get uh, the end of policing from a few of the links that we have at our website, superpodesto.com. But um, there's a lot of other things too. So if you're still trying to do some holiday shopping, if you're into that, it's, even though my wife and I just had this conversation, I, I try to every, I actually stopped. I tried to for years try to go, hey, why don't we just not do gifts? We're adults and we don't need this shit. The kids are fine, but why don't we just not? And I just got people in my family just ain't having it. And so we got to do gifts or something. Everywhere. You know, if you need me to help you, I'll go shopping with you. Yeah, but it's also a money thing. I know. Hun. And Eve's dealing with most of it. I don't worry about that. But anyway, okay. there's StuartBernasso.com. Well, if you need to shop for her or your daughter. And if, uh, you. we can talk about that off. Chat with me yeah, later. Yeah, because yep, yep, that's, that's a little complicated. Okay. Thing too. So um, if you need like a, a, a gift card, and, and I've done this myself, actually. Uh, I, I think it was for a birthday. And I won't say who. She didn't listen to the show, but I won't say who. Uh, but for... Uh, somebody's birthday who is close to me and totally, you know, this isn't like a casual acquaintance. I wouldn't, I don't think I would do this. I got them a gift card, a hundred dollar gift card at NB, which is an amazing sex toy store. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and we have links to them online mm -hmm. and um, there's some sex toy stuff, but there's beer drop and there's uh, some clothes stuff there and a whole bunch of different places. You My can, favorite used bookstore. Yeah. you And I, actually we're working on becoming um, affiliates of a couple other places. If you like the hot and spicy foods, we're going to, oh my God. We do. Oh, this we is. We do like the hot and spicy foods, This is going to be, uh, I don't want to say the company yet because we're, we're in the process of doing it, but you'll be able to get some stuff in theory at our website, which by the way, we get a couple bucks off of, and it helps just keep the show going, yeah. especially for as some of us are out of work. <laughs> some of us are out of work. So you should totally check that out. StuartPodesto.com. There's a, a whole bunch of just amazing stores. And like we don't do – like you, you're not going to get links to Amazon. You're not going to get links to Walmart and shit like that. You're going to get to some you know, small businesses. They may not be, quote, local, but they're small business, relatively small businesses that aren't like part of a chain with just a different name on it or a, or a company. Yeah, I think Powell's is like Vermont or uh, Oregon. Oregon. They're in Portland. I've been in their like main store. It's a... Oh, my. oh you're right. I'm thinking of a different... I mean, there's another used bookstore I sometimes buy oh, sure. from and it's up, up there. Okay. Oh, yes. Oregon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing then. There's yeah, oh, yeah. It's huge. like they're kind of known. They're like kind of famous, aren't mm -hmm. they? Like like oh, uh -huh. like people kind of know them. Yeah. Yeah. And so so check that out, superpodesto.com. There's some amazing places on there. I like using them myself. It's actually, I gotta be honest with you, pretty self serving if it's something I like. And I try to become an affiliate and slap it up on the website. You so. still get pasta? 
Yes. In fact, I still have some in the fridge that's been sitting there for a while. I have to cook. Some low-carb stuff is mm -hmm. uh, because I'm diabetic, he said, as he's drinking beer. So, oh, speaking of diabetic. Oh, I was going to go somewhere, but that's okay. We can no, go diabetic. Um, No. You talking? I can I can get the diabetic thing in somewhere else. This is what we do, folks. Now you see it. We well, really truly don't like plan anything. We just go no. and talk about Th stuff. This, this list I have, I just wrote before you got here. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no, speaking, this was a oh, okay. So my thing I was going to say about diabetic is that I was because I was hanging out with my mom today. Mm -hmm. I asked her about, and she's diabetic, and I did the twenty three and Me thing, um, oh, like yeah. a lot of other people have, and um, most of the, my you health. Didn't, you didn't use Duchestery dot com. No. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, so y'all have to just yeah, you'll just have to watch listen to that at some point. <laughs> it's on it's on our band camp page, which you can yeah, get to at superdesk.com. Yeah. Sorry. So um sorry, not sorry. Yeah. So on twenty three and me, mm -hmm. like they have I have the the health scan, so they tell you like if you have a proclivity to a certain diseases or you know, if your DNA shows anything. Um most of them are are, are I don't. Most of the ones that they've tested so far, I, I do not have the, the DNA for, but I do. Yep. But what I do have, is, they said I'm very likely to be diabetic. Oh, okay. And well, my mother's diabetic. Both of my... Well, I'm not... Both of her grandparents were diabetic. Okay, I can't her, speak like, to your mom, but yeah. just what from being your friend for a while and... and not that I've thought about it, but now that you bring it up, I, I don't think you your diet is in a in a sense that we're you're going to have a huge issue with that. You don't. Well, I have, but I have um, cholesterol issues. Doesn't that kind of go hand in hand eventually? Yeah, they do. Yeah. So yeah, I do. I kind of do. I will say, once you go down that path of any of them, uh, of diabetes, cholesterol, and what's the third one? I can't remember what the third one is. They like to put you on like all of the meds. They I'm just, just on a stint. That's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, just on one stint and that's it. They, yeah. And then I I'm, take and then I take um uh fish oil pills to because mm -hmm. that's supposed to help with your heart too and yeah, I'm supposed to have another uh full exam like in the next couple months to to see how I'm at but yeah so anyway um yeah talking about diabetes so I it just made me thinking like how do you even know if you have diabetes like I I just don't know how you how do you find that out like how would I even know but this is what she told me and maybe it's different for other people but I remember my mother doing this for the longest time she drank water like it was her job like she could never she was thirsty all the time and she also wanted to eat ice all the time. She was constantly chewing ice. And they finally tested her and said, oh, you're diabetic. So I don't know. That's what she said was the start of it. Well, I can. Well, all right, now we're getting into old people things. And then my sciatica. And I know. Don't I know. I can talk about sciatica know, too, but too, I'm not going to. I know. Me too. I, that's old news. So I have had blood pressure issues forever and i think that is hereditary uh, it mm -hmm. could be part hereditary but it could also be that i'm always uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna, and i don't, I don't want to make fun of these people either um i'm not going to say it's because i'm an empath but let's just say that i get mad about stuff like the world and the middle east yeah, yeah, situation yeah and, we're just and i think it's because of that we we, we sometimes care a little because we give a shit because we just care we just God give a shit about it. stuff it's Which sometimes, is it's actually sometimes. why we do this show. I know. We really do care a lot about so, shit. <laughs> so I think that might be part of it, but some of it might be hereditary too in my in my yeah. case. So I'm talking about for my teens. Mm -hmm. um, I was on blood pressure medication in my early 20s. Um, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, they, they almost didn't let me play baseball in college because of it. I like had to beg my way through it. I like my doctor was like a million and 12 at the time and he was ready to retire and he didn't give that much of a shit. Mm -hmm. So the, he was like ready to not sign off on my physical. And I had to kind of, kind of like harass him a little bit till he said, yeah, yeah, fine. I'll just sign the thing. Um, so you've always been kind of sensitive to things that, that are upsetting or troublesome or, well, I, again, I don't know if it's that just that, but I think it might be part of that, but it's mm -hmm. also, I think it's, hereditary look in my family and, right right um, might be a so, bit, probably right. a little both so i had that and the medication i've been on has always made me always thirsty and always have to pee 
Mm-hmm. So the thing you're talking about, your mom, I, I, that was just, I just, if that were my case, I would just figure as part of my the meds I've been on since my 20s. So I just had a doctor at the time, which uh, we have talked about on the previous show, as I'm sure it'll get on our Patreon thing eventually. Um, but the doctor I had at the time just kept bugging me. He wanted me to go for the bl- blood test to check, you know, fasting, glucose, all mm-hmm. that shit. Yeah, all that stuff. And I finally did. Like right before I left to leave town to go visit my dad. Mm. And I got the results while I was in Arizona to visit my dad. And like, I'm fucking diabetic. Like, like holy shit, Dave, you're diabetic. You better fucking. You like, need to chill out. Right. So that the joke always was that I caught it when I was in Arizona. That's always been the joke. And just from there, that's when when I said this. Uh, that's Brian, when, what but, are you doing? But that's when my family was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, we're all diabetic. We're all on metformin. I'm like, bro, I'm like 40. You're telling me this now that I have this family history? And then my mother chimes with, oh, yeah, our side too. You know, all with your grandmother. I'm like, bro, I'm... I had a fucking parking space with my name on it at Nick Tahoe's, which I'm so, I know that's a local reference. It's a it's a local restaurant. Uh, actually, if you look up, if you if you Google garbage plate, you will find out. It's all actually you need to it's know. been on like food shows, like a Food Network and all. Lots that. of food shows. Yeah. So if you Google garbage plate, don't use Google. Use another search engine. If you dogpile, I'm going to use dogpile from now. If you dogpile uh, garbage plate. Then this will pop up. So anyway, I've had my own parking space at, at Nick Tahoe's for like 30 years. And now you tell me that our family, both sides, are susceptible to diabetes. Yep, both sides of my family too. My Both my grandmother on my mom's side and my grandmother on my dad's side, both are diabetic. No wonder. And my um, great-grandmother was also diabetic. So one of my great... My my, grandfa- my grandfather's mother was also diabetic. <laughs> So, yeah, it just, like, runs in my family. But, I mean, yeah, I eat fairly healthy, but, I mean, it's kind of in my genetics. Like, my one, un- my one uncle, my um, my uncle Chris, he is, uh, he's he's pretty healthy. Um, he's, well, he's he's vegan. He's my mom's youngest youngest sibling. She's the oldest of six. Um, so, he's, he's vegan. He's pretty healthy. Um, he, when he, before he wasn't vegan, he was on, um, two different medications for his, uh, his, his cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And then when he became vegan, when he, when he stopped drinking and he became vegan, um, he doesn't have to take medication anymore, but his cholesterol is just normal. Yeah. It's not like it's super low. It's just like a normal person's cholesterol. So it's obviously, this is a hereditary thing in my family because my uncle should have super low cholesterol if he doesn't even fucking eat things with cholesterol but he doesn't if i may be that guy for a moment Mm -hmm. um that person i'll say i won't genderize Mm it uh i i do wonder how much of this is for both of us for any of us for all of us all of you out there listening uh especially in the united states but i would say in any uh quote developed country um i do wonder how much of it is hereditary Mm -hmm. and how much of it is our food supply Oh, yeah. I, I think there's some of both. Of what's available. Think? I mean, if you think about it, unless you're going to literally grow all your own shit or be super vigilant about what you eat and where you yeah, buy your food from. Yeah, and you'd from. have to be super vigilant if you're really going to do that. Um, just everything has extra sodium, has extra whatever in it. And you know, I fucking love extra story. <laughs> and and <laughs> I do. I love salt. Salt's like my favorite. <laughs> and it, it's it's just you know I uh, yeah I and uh, which I just well again if you're new to the show and you you're not able to go back and listen to the old shows you'll you'll find this out quickly. Any chance I can work this in, I will. Man, it's about fucking capitalism. It's what mm-hmm. what can. For the most amount of money, what can be produced that'll have a shelf life of like a gazillion years Mm -hmm. that'll sit there on the shelf until somebody buys it and makes whatever conglomerate more money. And I just today, I was literally as I was, as I went to get this cerveza, um, I, I've been looking at, uh, I was looking at labels of canned food Mm -hmm. and how much actual sodium's in that. And it's like, 
I didn't realize it, just how much salts in in this stuff and preserved food and like what like what preserved foods exactly for example green beans okay like so canned green beans who the, staple which is, every people which have is it. supposed okay. to be good for you right because it's right. a vegetable it's a vegetable it's but it, ha- it 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 it's just to, well, let me let me back up actually i don't I'll, know but those green beans like the ones in the can though mind you i do think they're delicious but i they, don't I hate green beans but i get I, I like well but i mean but I mean, they are delicious, mm-hmm. but I mean, you can kind of tell it's like this is it's not like real food. It's <laughs> a, if you cut if you get like green beans like in the in the produce section and you cut it up yourself and yes. you put it in, oh, then sure. then a whole different then Absolutely. they're totally healthy and good for you without question and, and also delicious, but it's a different whole thing. Yeah, no. So so we here at the house we have been. Um, not in a survival, well, kind of in a in a in a mild survivalist kind of way, we because we've never had we always have crap in our cupboards, right? Well, there's always food. We're not we're never gonna. There's always for, like oatmeal pies or something. Yeah, I mean, there, well, I don't know about that, but but there's always like, uh, I, I love my wife and I love my daughter, but they're big on buying something and eating one and it'll sit there forever. It drives me insane. And then and then like six months later, they'll be like, where did the Blah blah. I'll just use yours. Oatmeal pies go, and I'm like, dude, I ate them before they went bad. Not all at once, mm-hmm. and then, you know. But it's like they've been here for six freaking months, and you forgot about Bowed them. To, I had to eat them because right. I didn't want to waste them. Yes, and and like wasting food sucks. Yes, a whole bunch. We absolutely. Eat and so it, it would be like that, and and so, but also looking as as how our economics are going all across. Ooh. Across the world, um, oh, yeah. it's just like the, when they say it's food chain supply issues of stuff that's not around. When it's re- you take your pick, I don't care. Um, whatever you want, I have to finish this beer anyway. You decide what you want. I'll have this one because I actually kind of did this. Sorry, Jenny. No, it, it, trust me, the Jenny will get drunk. It'll- Dude, what are you fucking up my... I know, I'm fucking up... <laughs> Damn. If, yeah, if anybody can hear that, that was me fucking up the refrigerator Damn. trying to get beer out. It's like shake... It's, we're going to play Beer Hunter later. Do you remember that? <laughs> I've, have you played Beer Hunter before? Is that really a thing? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't know what you're even talking about. Oh, my about. God. Okay, remember Doug and Bob McKenzie? Of course. Right. Okay, so if you haven't... The, the movie Strange Brew, and they're Great from movie. Second City uh, SCTV. Yep, awesome, The character's awesome. right. So on their album, which uh-huh. I have... Um, uh, they do this this beer hunter. So you get a six pack. It's got to be cans, and you take one, and you shake it up, and then you mix it in with the other six, and then one at a time, like like Russian roulette, you hold the beer can up to your head and you open it, and then if it doesn't <laughs> to you, then you drink it, obviously. Right, right. And then the next person takes another one of beer and then puts it up to their head, and then. Oh, that's gets, hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's called the Beer Hunter. We did it once on a, a class trip to New York when we were in high school. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. I love that. The Beer Hunter. I'll play it for you when we're done. Okay. I have cool, it. cool. Um Man, that, that movie was so funny. I oh, own that movie. That movie is so hilarious. <laughs> Strange Brew is the Strange name Brew. Of if you haven't out. seen it, if you like really ridiculously dumb Canadian humor, yes. you should totally watch it. It's really great. Absolutely. It's so good. Um and they like beer in that movie, mm-hmm. so I'm okay with it. Uh, okay, so anything Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis does, anyway, I'll totally watch it because they were great. So we have been trying to, again, not like a huge room full of survivalist shit, but just trying to have not oatmeal pie stuff, but just right. having stuff around the house in case the next when the next supply chain issue or whatever or if you know the revolution comes around or whatever whatever so we've just been trying to stockpile some a little bit of stuff and we're not doing great with it it's not like a huge thing it's like one shelf so far um but in researching stuff Mm -hmm. i i've I've been looking at labels a little bit closer and it's amazing the crap that's in our preserved so so I mean, it, but I mean, it's there, so they has the shelf life mm-hmm. because those green beans, because of the sodium yeah. content, amongst other things, other right, right. Yeah, yeah. Those are those that what's it can like three, four years, probably. You know what? Here's the thing, and I've been looking. And this is before even the, this crap about supply chain. And by the way, just real quick aside, um, 
check out Rick Wolf. We've talked. I've talked oh, yeah, about him on the show before. Rick Wolf. Uh, Richard Wolf, and he talks about the supply chain stuff. It's actually a, a fraud. It's it's a scam. They're they're the supply chain thing because other people, even a lot of quote liberals, are putting on their social media feeds about how there's supposedly there's this supply chain issue yet a lot of the huge company corporations are making record profits. Mm -hmm. So even though there's not places to buy things, they're making amazing money. So it's kind of a scam. But anyway, so yeah, I think there is a way to can stuff that doesn't have all that shit. Because if you seal it, if you like seal it, seal it, air's mm -hmm. not getting in, it should be good. And these expiration dates just seem to be kind of well, arbitrary. I mean, to old, get you to buy I mean our stuff. ancestors did, I mean, I, I mean, I'll just go as far as my mom used to do canning. Mm hmm and because my my dad was a big gardener and we had a huge garden so we had canned you know she she picked yeah. a lot of shit yep. we had canned tomatoes that's what we gotta you know. get better at we're okay at it we're, yeah we i know that's it. it was funny my mom asked me a few years ago if i wanted all of her canning supplies and i said no i'm kind of hating myself that i said no i probably should have said yes yeah, I don't know that again. She doesn't throw a lot of stuff out. She might still have it. I guess I could ask her. That's true. <laughs> I, I, I mean, the stuff we didn't can anything this past year. I mean, any extra food that we grew in the backyard, we put it in the um, in a food stand that mm -hmm. we we give it we gave it away. Right, right. Um, so we didn't keep much to can. Although I think I want to change that. I also want to expand how much we grew last year from to this next year. Mm -hmm. um, ironically, before you got here, I ordered seeds. Oh, where do you order your seeds? Uh, depends on what I want. Uh, from this place, um, Johnny's. 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 Yeah. Mm. If you look Johnny's seeds, you'll it'll pop right up. Uh, they, I've tried them, and the stuff that they sent worked out really well. That's actually where I get my seeds to grow popcorn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which we harvested this year, and we have it. And I'm waiting for Eve to say, "Hey, let's have some popcorn," so we could try our own popcorn. God oh my God, that'd be so exciting! We're doing that tomorrow. Damn, I've just decided we're having popcorn. You for guys dinner should. Tomorrow. You guys should have like a. You guys should do like a like watch a movie and and eat popcorn together. I hate movies. You can I watch know. a documentary or something else that you like. I don't know. We. There's a conversation to have at a bar. Let's not have that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that conversation here. Oh, that's funny. Actually, I'm just writing down. I'm going to put a, a link to Richard Wolf's stuff so you and should. And popcorn date. <laughs> no, 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 no. You should check that out. I'm kind of curious about it. I'll be honest. I fucking love popcorn. It's really, oh. it's still really, honestly, one of my favorite snacks is is popcorn and i have actually some fancy popcorn at my house yeah some like like different kernel like different types and hybrids and stuff because i'm sure you know when you when you bought it that there are different hybrids yeah of popcorn yeah quite a few actually. yeah this was and, and it was interesting and again shows that are on the internet anymore i grew that the popcorn in a grow box which um back in the day we had a a, a a thing with the, the company that makes a thing called grow box and if they gave us each a grow box we would grow stuff and post stuff on it online and, and we, we would did. talk about it and we did and and it i said great and i said if it were great i will buy 10 of them and you bought a bunch of and them and i've got 10 of them in my garage and i've been using them every year yeah and so we grew uh popcorn in a grow box and in theory was supposed to grow six stocks only three actually produced anything um, because when you corn is apparently, I, did, I just found this out really water intensive. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, big time, really. yeah, 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 yeah. And I think because in a box, well, well like I mean, that, do you ever, I mean, did you ever live near corn? Like, I used to live near cornfields, I've lived near no. cornfields growing up, and yeah, when it, there's water, they are constantly watering them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so I find, I mean, and as much as I highly endorse, I love grow boxes they're, they're really awesome um they say in their literature or whatever you want to call it their ads that you know you only need to water it like once a week that's fucking bullshit that's well yeah well definitely not, <laughs> not for just the corn things. but yeah yeah but but yeah. other things too i think other than a couple of other things pretty much i was out there almost every day Mm -hmm. putting water in these things which is awesome because it grew amazingly but oh yeah the stuff i mean i've had plenty of the vegetables that you've grown yeah but great. it's not yeah it's not once a week it's not set it and forget it for sure no 
So, uh, but well, one of the things that I, the reason I'm ordering seeds in December is because I goofed. I didn't me being out of work now, mm-hmm. and even before I was out of work, I was quote unquote working, but working from home for a month, where I was only turning in lesson plans like once a week, and not doing anything the rest of the week. And listen to last week's show if you want to know what. Yeah, you'll about. get it. Um, so I, I hate TV for the most part, but I've been watching cooking shows, and so in a couple of the shows I've been watching, like these these perf- these cooking show chef people, they've got freaking herbs growing, like in their house. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've got one of those boxes. Well, I. And like, okay, I did not plan for this. Now I need something growing in my house now, in the house during the winter, which is going to be interesting in terms of light and heat and stuff like that. But so I ordered seeds so I can start something for probably the second half of winter, but then take it into the spring when I actually Mm -hmm. plant Mm -hmm. for the garden. So I ordered seeds today for some herbs. Nice. That have a fucking H in it. They do have a fucking H in it. If y'all don't know that, That's then watch some Eddie Izzard. Look it up. Um, She's hilarious. Eddie Izzard yeah. was on the Colbert show like Recently? a week ago. Oh, I didn't know. And I was it was really interesting. Um I'm not like the hugest fan of Colbert. He's like pretty liberally straightforward. Nothing, nothing, you know, revolutionary. He's fine. The world's fine. He's funny. He makes me. He makes me good on occasion. Yeah. Um, but he looked really uncomfortable around Eddie Izzard. Really? Yeah. I was picking. I thought it was weird. I thought the way the con- the way the conversation went, he seemed really kind of nervous and was. You know when you're nervous, which. <laughs> If you listen to the show, you might think I'm nervous because I take up honestly, the conversation. Honestly, maybe Stephen Colbert is a huge fan. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Eddie Izzard. I would be absolutely nervous to meet her. I would be. This didn't feel that way. Oh, because I've been. I, I'm just saying. If I there's some like if I met her, I would be. I've been a fan for so long. Mm-hmm. I would absolutely just. I would be like, nope. I would probably be so embarrassed by anything I would say because I would sound like a fool. I wouldn't. I would have back before. I think. I think Eddie's gone a little soft. <laughs> I'm just saying. I because I remember how they were back in the day, mm-hmm. and they were definitely more radical. And I think as age has gone on, I think they've softened a little bit. And so I'd be kind of like, oh, okay, it's good to meet you. How are you doing? All right. Well, whatever. I mean, we I'm all have, saying. but I'm just, and I'm, yeah, and I'm thinking maybe, I don't know. But yeah, you thought that he seemed uncomfortable around her? Yeah, I really did. Uh, it was interesting. So, anyway, just, I, I'm I sure. wonder if he does he have, has he had other transgender people on the show? I don't know. If I can't imagine that would really even matter, to be honest. I, me too. It's weird. If you get a chance, I mean, I know it's on YouTube, but like, hmm. like the Colbert site, just go ahead and check oh, it yeah. out. Maybe you can tell me. Maybe it's just me. Maybe the, <laughs> Maybe the anvil was hitting me wrong. <laughs> no, not me. I don't have any. I don't. I don't do that. I have no idea what crazy. you're talking about. It's just a mystery. So weird. It is. Um. All right. I'm good. <laughs> well, no, I got like some bigger things. I, I know. I don't yeah. even. I know. What oh no! I, I meant to ask you though. Yeah. I do want to do this this week because of where we are in time. Yeah. So this is like the first time in I don't know twenty years or so. You're not like seriously hardcore working in retail during the holiday season. You are so good. I got it. It's right. I know you were working so good. So what's that yeah. all about? So, hey, what's that about? Hey, what's that about? Hey, 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 who are these people? Yeah, exactly. Um, Another douchebag. I don't like. Sorry, I know. I know. I know. All right. Um. So. Yeah, so today is my mama's birthday. She is 76 years young. Um, and I know some people hate that. But, and that's kind of why I said it, because I know so many people hate that. It's just funny. So anywho, my mom is 76 today. And we went out to lunch. I, she came into the city. And uh, I asked her where she wanted to go. She's like, I'm kind of feeling like a burrito. Dude. I, she, I know, she's asking me, where do you want to go? I'm like, it's, my, it's not my fucking no, birthday. I'm- Beer's like all on its side. Oh, I'm sorry, friend. I'm sorry, dude. All right, well, I'm about to play Beer Hunter. 
Oh my god, get away from there. Get away from the from the thing. Right, the I'm, about buttons. To, I'm about to play Beer Hunter. Here we go. Stay away from the buttons. Uh, we'll see. Ah, uh, it's just a regular beer. So, so yeah, so I went with my mom to uh, to John's Tex-Mex on uh, South Avenue. Um, it's delicious. Um, we like it there. And, um, yeah, we've been, I mean, my mom and I've gone, I mean, well, they moved. I don't know if you knew that they had moved from there no. where they used to, yeah, where they used to be to a new space and the new space is bigger and it's, it's bigger and better. Oh, wait, no. Like from a long time ago. Um, like a few years ago. Oh, like yeah, 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 no, I've been, we've ago, been there. I'm yeah. thinking, Julia yeah. Julia drags me there. I mean, it's not my favorite, but that, it's okay. Oh, I love it. I mean, I've been going there for, I've just been going there for a long yeah, time. Yeah, no, it's Okay. I, so, anywho, so my mom was like craving a burrito. So I'm like, all right, where, wherever you want to go, because it's your birthday. You tell me where you want to go. And that's what that's what we'll do. So, yeah, I got to hang out with my mom on her birthday, and because my mom's birthday is in December during holiday season, uh, usually I don't get to spend time with her on her birthday. Usually I have to just call her and you know I sing her happy birthday and just you know we just chat on the phone for a little bit and then. That's it. Some once in a great while, we've met up to um, for you know dinner after I got out of work. But she's getting older. Driving at night is uncomfortable for her. So, um, and she doesn't live. She doesn't live near where I live. And you know, as you know, I don't drive. So we have to plan things for earlier in the day. And so that's what we do. So it was so nice to hang out with my mom today and if i was at my old job i wouldn't have been able to do that and i mean you know there were lots of things i liked about my old job but the fact that i don't have to work at a high stress level like you know fast-paced uh retail job during the holidays has been I so awesome well again sorry i mean we get busy i mean we get busy at the museum you know there's times when there's like a little bit of a line and sure. somebody's getting something rung up and somebody else needs something you know gift package because we sell a lot i mean obviously i work at a museum so a lot of the stuff we sell are gifts people come in there to buy a gift <laughs> from a local you know artist which is awesome and i appreciate that um so yeah, I mean, there's still there's still a lot of that kind of stuff, but it's just certainly not at the same pace, right? And again, back much to, smaller store, um, different type of vibe, just all different. And back to you know shows that we're on and are not anymore. Mm -hmm. When we've had Aunt Marcy on, mm -hmm. who is like the queen mm -hmm. of retail. I mean, oh, she, definitely. Yeah, I mean the the stuff. Her, her and I could tell some stories. Oh, absolutely. Thanks. Oh, we have, yeah, we have stories. Like, <laughs> you, you're lucky if you get a day off, which I think goes against some labor laws, but whatever. I mean, just the yeah, the stories that that I've heard. You know, it's just like it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it is insane. And I mean, when I first started, when I first started my old job, um, when I became a manager, we were actually salaried, mm -hmm. and that sucks so bad because I always had to work overtime. There's just no way, if you're a manager at a retail establishment that's at least somewhat successful, at le you know, at least somewhat successful anyway, during the holidays, you don't, you cannot work 40 hours a week and get your shit done. You just can't. So if you're going holiday shopping and you're not going to get stuff from SewerPodesto.com, hint, hint, and you go out <laughs> shopping, don't be a dick to people who are working retail. Please don't. Don't. Don't be that please person. Please don't. Please don't. Don't. I mean, like I went to the, like even wherever, wherever you are, you're going to the post office. Don't be a fucking dick to the postal workers. Don't be just, everybody's working really hard. Even it's if, a tough job. Even if you're listening to the show somewhere outside of the U.S., don't be a dick to the people there either. Just don't be yeah, a dick. Yeah, just don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick about it. About you know, don't about anything. Don't be a dick. Stop being so, a dick. So, I mean, this happened to me recently at the store. For the most part, people are there. People at where I work are the customers are really nice. Like we have a lot of people, a lot of return customers. If you're a member of the of uh, the museum, um, you get ten percent off. So people, you know, take advantage of that as they should. It's it's part of the deal. They should do that. So we get we. I mean we 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 get a good amount of people there. But um, we, but and most of the people are nice. But I did have one customer that was rude to me recently, and I mean, she wasn't horribly rude. I've I've had way worse, but at the same time, she was just very frustrated by the fact that she couldn't get get waited on right away. I'm like, 
we've all decided as a society that we just wait our turn. Like this is what we decided. <laughs> This was well, decided. The alternative? I mean, this was decided like, way before you or I were born, and I anybody. If, I don't even know if that's decided. I mean, like, what's the alternative? Just everyone bum rush the camp. Right. That's what no. I mean. Like, like as a society, we decided that we just wait our turn. If somebody came before you, if so, if there's a situation before you, then you just have to wait until it's your turn. And like I know when Dan and I were talking about that, that's what uh, that's the term he used. He's like, we had decided this as a society, so I think it's cute. So I'm going to say it again, okay? Because uh, my husband's so cute. Um, yeah. So I mean, we decided this. This is what we do. She just couldn't handle it, and she had a little meltdown, and you know, was like, put the thing down on the counter and walked out. But for the most part, that that is literally the only. That is literally the only kind of like annoying customer I've had. Like that's it. I mean, in retail, that's unheard of. I get, I get at my old job, I got stuff like that. Like on the hour, I got people like (laughs) that. And and of course, we've all had experiences where you have where you're the customer and you've just had someone working who is just shitty. Oh, they're just horrible people. Oh yeah. yeah oh, absolutely. totally. And 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 as as a retail person, I have seen it, and it's frustrating for me too, as somebody who who's oh, who's imagine. a professional retailer, oh, yeah, to be around somebody who really is just doing their job poorly, and right. you know that they're doing their job poorly. Yeah. But and by the same token, but I still don't act like a dickhead. Right, I still no, wait my fucking. You turn. know what? As someone who has <laughs> been behind the scenes in those situations, mm-hmm. um. Not necessarily quote retail, but in restauranty type stuff. Oh yeah, you, you don't know. It's, if, it's very similar vibe. It is. It it's totally very is. similar. Like you don't know if they're in over their heads. You don't know like like when people are like oh they were the service was horrible and so I left a shitty tip. You have no idea if it had anything to do with your server. Mm-hmm. It could have been something in the back. It could have been something with the uh, supply chain. I, don't know if I said that on purpose. Um, you know, it, you never know if it's the actual server or if it's something that they have no control over. Is why your food come out slow or whatever? Yeah, if you so, pay just attention, don't be a dick. Just I know. Be a dick. Just pay attention. We're all and, just like, trying to get through this life. Just we really are. Kind of if you if you're at a if you're at a store or you're at a restaurant, or you're at a hotel, whatever. If you're somewhere and you can see that they're understaffed. Just fucking wait your turn. And if you really can't wait your turn, like you have shit to do, you have somewhere you have to be, no. don't be a fucking, don't make a big stink about it. Just just kindly walk out and do your next thing. And like, if, just don't, just don't be, because while I was there, a couple people had a big, you know, while I was at the post office today, oh, so at the post office today, literally, I, I my mom drove... <laughs> My mom drove me to the post office because she was being nice, and there was a guy in there who had a big box. I thought it was just one box. Nope, it was a box full of little boxes. Okay, and that's okay. But by the same token, here mm-hmm. I, we and we do got to go. But I know. by the Sorry. same token, if you're the customer, mm-hmm. right? Also understand if there, there's a line behind you. Don't fucking make small talk. Don't no. Oh my god. No, last time I was at the post office just the other day. Like it's like there's a line going out the door. Mm-hmm. And there's like someone there with only it just making unbelievable small talk to the person <gasps> working there. And I'm like, dude, do you see the people waiting in line and you're here talking about the weather and all this? It's like, bro, take care of your business and get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. And no, I, you're right about that. No and question. And I was a customer and just wanted to kick the customer's ass. I mean, I was yeah, a couple like, of customers left today in the line, and they were like made a big huff about it. When, the last one that left, I I just I just looked over at them. I said, "Well, I'm a little closer now." Yeah, right. <laughs> like, so. mm. All right, we'll all right, be, we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go. We'll be back next week. Superdesto.com. We're gonna I'm gonna post and fuck. In fact, before I even process this show, I will put on uh, on our Patreon the show that got me fired. So you can hear what all the controversy is <laughs> about. You're going to be mildly disappointed, I think. But, you know, it's not like I said, burn the place down. But, but you know, whatever. People speak of Karen. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll be back mm. next week. Ciao. Bye. Oh, and, yeah. But Eric Estrada, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Millions are using the greatest phone app ever created. Curbster is filling that need you have to get rid of those pesky, unwanted lovers that just aren't worth the effort. I met this guy at the Renaissance Festival. I don't know. He looked cute in his tights, and after some need, I was feeling a bit randy. So we got together. Well, turns out his outfit wasn't the only medieval thing he had going on. Really? God doesn't like doggy? Get the fuck out of here! Curbster helped Guinevere out. After a quick swipe of the app, Sir Liamer was out of missionary and into the pillory in minutes. Literally. People were throwing rotten cabbage and tomatoes at Liamer, and our maiden was free and clear to find a knight with some real lancing skills. And Curbster is not just for the straight set. I met this guy at Hot Cross Buns, the new local gakery, and we really hit it off. I'm such a sucker for assless chaps. But after we hooked up, I found out, really? Log Cabin Republican? Aw, oh, hell no. Download the Curbster app wherever you get your regular dating apps and Pornhub and Gay Hub.